I'm going to be upfront about this. If you can't stand hearing opinions that you don't believe yourself, if that bothers you just way too much, then you probably won't want to watch this video. I'll try not to be too bombastic in any direction because despite the fact that I do enjoy listening to people have opinions that I don't have, I know it is kind of annoying when people go overboard with it and exaggerate and, you know, stuff like that. So I'll try not to do that. Alright, so today we are talking about Mr. Sugiyama and the concept of the death of the author, kind of, I guess. Now, the death of the author doesn't refer to an author's literal death, which happened to Sugiyama last year. It's more of a concept that people usually bring up when they want to talk about the fact that you can like a certain piece of art or, you know, body of work and not like the artist. There's more that goes into it, like the artist not really having, not really being able to influence said art after it is published or it is completed. It's more complicated than that, but we don't really need to go into that for this video, because I'm more interested in talking about the concept of liking art and not liking the artist. All right, so what does this have to do with Mr. Sugiyama? So, about two weeks ago, I was watching a Dragon Quest XI review, and in this video, they eventually mentioned Mr. Sugiyama. And when they did that, they showed a couple of articles and some text on screen that basically said that uh, Mr. Sugiyama was a terrible person, and that they wished that he would get fired, and that he was not what Dragon Quest was, essentially. Something like that, I'm paraphrasing. And the articles that he showed said something amongst the lines of Sugiyama denies Japanese war crimes during the Second World War, and Sugiyama has some anti-LGBT take, something like that. So originally I was just going to proceed to talk about this without actually knowing exactly what he said because I wasn't really... This video originally wasn't going to be about what Sugiyama said specifically, but then when I was planning it I thought, well I should probably at least know exactly what he said. So I did a little, very little light research and I have three articles here because that's what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to get at least three articles apparently. So I got three. I did the bare minimum. <laughs> I'm not going to be reading the whole thing. Some of them are about his death and mention these things. Some of them are specifically about uh, his controversial takes. I'll be linking them in the description if you want to go over it and make sure that I'm not bamboozling anybody. From IGN, Sugiyama, however, became a controversial figure in his later years. In 2015, Sugiyama appeared alongside Japanese politician Miu Sugita, where he endorsed claims that the lack of children from LGBTQ plus couples were an issue for Japan. Now, when I first read this, I was very brain hurt because that statement doesn't really say a whole lot about Sugiyama's opinion on gay people and couples in general. You could easily interpret that as saying that Sugiyama thinks that gay people should have more children. So I was very confused when I first read this. Alright, let's continue. Sugiyama also subscribed to Japanese nationalist rhetoric around World War II, opposing a resolution to ask Japan to apologize for its use of, quote, Comfort women, a colloquial term for women who were forced into sexual servitude by soldiers during the conflict. Alright, so that was the first article. I'm just going to read all of them and then talk about it, I guess. Alright, article number two from thegamer.com. Despite his works being massively influential both in Japan and internationally, Sugiyama was a controversial figure. Along with being a board member of the Nationalist Japanese Institute for National Fundamentals, Sugiyama was also a staunch denialist of both the, the Nanjin Massacre, where up to 300,000 Chinese civilians and soldiers were killed by Imperial Japanese forces, and the, de and the Japanese use of, quote, comfort women, who were women forced into sexual slavery by the Japanese during World War II. He also took part in a panel in 2015 where he agreed with the infamously anti-LGBT politician Mio Sugita, who both argued LGBTQ education is not necessary and also dismissed high suicide rates among Japanese LGBTQ people. However, he did later backtrack on these claims. He stated that he believes that the Japanese government must step in to prevent unreasonable discrimination against LGBTQ people. He did not expand on what unreasonable discrimination is. And last but not least, stay with me here. This is from 
nvexplore.net. This video popped up again due to Sugiyama's involvement with the Japanese politician Miyosugita. On the channel Sukara's uh, words I'm not even going to try to say, you reprogram. The episode from 2015 was recently dug up on social media thanks to an article from Sugita about how LGBT support was excessive in Japan, which isn't the first time she stated such a thing. In the program, Sugita speaks about how there is no need for LGBT education or support, even laughing at some moments with Sugiyama, as they talk about the absurdity of it. Sugiyama even goes on to agree with Sugita, noting that the lack of children from homosexual couples is a severe issue that needs to be discussed. According to the Anime News Network, it isn't the first time Sugiyama has said something completely abhorrent as the Dragon Quest composer has even gone as far to oppose the United States House of Representatives House Resolution 121, where the resolution asked the Japanese government to apologize for sexual slavery against women during World War II. Now again, I'm leaving all three articles in the description so you can read the rest, that's just little excerpts from the thing. Before I talk about this, let's just, uh, just want to remind you guys that Mr. Sugiyama, Mr. Koichi Sugiyama, was born in 1931. So right off the bat, it's not it's not really surprising that he isn't the most, or that he wasn't because he's passed now, the most progressive person when it came to, you know, gay people. I don't think that's surprising at all. One thing that's really confusing is in the first article, all they say about his comments on gay people essentially is that he endorses claims that the lack of children from gay couples is an issue which is very vague, and I will say that the fact that they don't quote him directly is really annoying. Now again, he's Japanese, he speaks Japanese, Japanese isn't as easy to translate into English as Spanish, for example. So maybe these websites just couldn't get a reliable translation and don't want to be liable for mistranslating because, you know, that kind of stuff happens all the time, so maybe that's why. But I do think it's rather interesting that they just kind of paraphrase what's been talked about and not give you the context because a lack of children from gay people being a problem can be interpreted as in many different ways. In a different context, this statement could be said by a LGBTQ plus activist talking about the fact that couples of the LGBTQ plus community aren't adopting children or aren't allowed to be aren't being allowed to adopt children, so it, it, it's really muddy. This is both mentioned in the first article and in the second article, and in both instances it's kind of unclear, and I don't know why they didn't just give us more context on what they were specifically talking about that when he said those things. Because again, you can easily interpret this as he thinks that gay couples should strive to have children? Now, what's most likely being said here is that he thinks that gay couples are a net negative for Japan because of the fact that they cannot have children. Maybe, I again, that's me interpreting his words because there's no direct quotes. Alright, so let's bring up a birth rate chart, uh, a Japanese birth rate chart. The Japanese birth rate has been on the decline since 1973 according to this chart, which will also be in the description. It's been on a steady decline. Also, I've heard many occasions that Japan's going through this, not I wouldn't even say monogamous phase, but just a lot of people aren't in relationships anymore. They're just isolating so much that they're not in relationships, which, again, contributes to the declining birth rate and stuff like that. So, obviously, given that whole circumstance, if a, a Japanese man who was born in the 30s sees that the birth rate's on the decline and also sees the rise of gay people. He's obviously going to attribute some of that birth decline due to gay people. So it, it's honestly not that much of an outrageous line of thinking. And also in the second article, it, they state that he backtracks his statements and says that the Japanese government must prevent unreasonable discrimination. Now the article does kind of mocked the fact that he used the word unreasonable, that he didn't really state what that was, but the fact that a man that was born in 1931 even would say that, to me that's like a net positive or a win. People should be taking that statement and holding it up as a trophy. Now, did he really meant what he was saying? I don't know. Like, we don't need to get into that whole discussion of do people really mean what they say later on? Because I don't know what's, I don't know what was in the man's head when he said it. Nobody knows. 
you can only infer based on his words and people who don't like him already will assume he's saying it just because and people who do like him will assume that he is being genuine so we're not even going to get to that discussion but the fact that he said that the japanese government must stop unreasonable discrimination against gay people is insane do you think he would have said that when he was 18 do you think a a 85 year old man from the 1930s would have said that of course not so i see that as a a very old man attempting to be somewhat progressive in his own conservative way now one of the articles does mention that he kind of scoffs at uh suicide rates among gay people i mean that that statement really isn't up for interpretation that just seems like the article does say dismiss not mock but that's bad suicide among any people is bad so can't really defend him there i was honestly the way that a lot of people talk about this situation i was expecting something a lot more quote radical from the man not just like hey maybe we should think about the lack of children being produced and just kind of mocking the idea which is par for the course for a very old man now the whole lgbtq education thing i have no idea what that is actually referring to and again they don't give us any direct quotes so i don't know what they're talking about like are they talking about specifically having a class about lgbt or are they just talking about mentioning anything gay in school at all those are two different things very different things that could fall under lgbtq education depending on who's talking so i have no idea what they're actually discussing again they could be like discussing like people wanting to introduce lgbtq education in the japanese curriculum or just mentioning it at all i don't know is it a super necessary thing i i'm not even here to really discuss that i don't care I, i'm not japanese i don't care what they teach over there but it is it is very it's a very vague thing and again the fact that they don't give any quotes it just muddies the water a whole bunch all right so moving on to the world war ii war crimes now sugiyama is objectively wrong here there's no like room for like oh maybe he no he's just wrong we know that the japanese did commit war crimes during world war ii we know about these quote comfort women and we know about the the raping that the chinese people received from them did you know that in north korea legally people have to refer to japanese people with an insult you can't just say uh the japanese or a japanese person there has to be an insult prefix to the word japanese in every instance so if you read their translated textbooks it'll just you know sound like a normal textbook and then they'll say something like the dirty jap devils instead of the japanese same thing for americans they have to refer to us to imperialist dogs constantly and is that based on nothing it can't be based on nothing now i didn't read it here but at some point in one of these articles they mentioned that sugiyama says that this is western propaganda but again the the north koreans believe this quote believe this more like know this as well and they they hate america so they would never fall for western propaganda so that's just wrong now again sugiyama is not a historian he is a composer at least i don't think he's a historian i could be wrong though i don't think i am though he's not a historian he's a composer he was a young a very young person when world war ii was happening and again world war ii isn't like modern war in the sense that everything you know about what's going on during the war is basically filtered so i don't think the japanese government was like hey by the way populace we're doing this to the chinese and doing this to the koreans just to let you guys know that that's not a thing so there'd be like no way that the average japanese person would have known about any of this stuff think of it like this imagine imagine a world in which we didn't know what was going on in Vietnam when, while it was happening. And there was no Vietnam protests. When the vets came back, they were, you know, good, you know, pats on the back. Ah, good luck next time. We still lost the war, but at least there was no hippies protesting the, the Vietnam vets when they came back. And then 30, 40 years later, we get word from other countries saying that the Americans committed these war crimes and these atrocities. If we have never saw it for ourselves, we would have been like, that's anti-American propaganda. That's no, there's no way that's real. We would have rejected it outright as just 
lies, we would have recognized that war is bad and bad things happening during war, but not these things, surely not. I can imagine something similar going through Sugiyama's head. Of course, not being informed, not knowing about what really was going on in these regions during the war, years later hearing it from other countries and being defensive about it. Also, I do want to mention that one of the articles mentions that he's part of a Japanese nationalist group. We have a negative connotation for nationalism in America. It's not the same. <laughs> Again, I don't know enough about Japanese culture and Japanese nationalism, but you throw the word nationalism out here in the West, specifically in America, and people, you know, kind of get scared of that. They think, oh, what kind of nationalism, you know? It's not, it's not a universal terrible thing so they're definitely muddying the waters by mentioning that at least i think that but i can't really prove that so sugiyama is objectively wrong about the war crimes and just has a bad take for modern standards when it comes to the lgbtq stuff to be completely honest if i myself was gay this might bother me a whole lot more than it bothers me now because as it stands now, I just kind of roll my eyes and go, he's an old Japanese man, of course. I kind of give him a pass because, again, he was born in freaking 1931, guys. Now, that being said, if Sugiyama said something bad about Mexico or Mexicans, then, yeah, I'd probably be a little more upset, to be honest. Here, let's get an example. If Sugiyama said something mildly offensive about interracial couples having children, you know, you just... I'm not even going to say anything specific, but just something negative, something slightly negative about interracial couples having children. Me, personally, I'd probably be a lot more upset than I am now. I think not liking the different, quote, races to have children is, to me, that is the most disgusting form of racism. I think it is abhorrent. That's just me personally. So if Mr. Sugiyama would have said like, hey, maybe a Japanese shouldn't have children with non-Japanese people, I would be kind of like, uh, that's pretty gross, sir. But then, even then, even then, he's a man from 1931, I would understand why he would say it. I wouldn't like it, but I would understand and try to, just to ignore it. I could still enjoy his music. If you fall under the umbrella of LGBTQ plus whatevers, then I'm not trying to tell you, like, you cannot be offended by what he said. All I'm saying is to consider the man's age and to consider in what era this man grew up in. You don't have to like what he says, you don't even have to accept it, but just try to understand the different points of view that you and he would have had. And But I am saying that just because you don't like somebody's point of view or opinion or whatever, doesn't mean you don't have to like their music. I'm gonna give you guys a real world example about this kind of situation with myself. So I am a huge fan of Pink Floyd. Maybe you guys know this already. Big fan of the Floyd. One of the members of Pink Floyd is Roger Waters and he is the creative lead behind a lot of the best albums that they made. And he's also gone on to do some solo albums after Floyd kind of broke apart. Now, Mr. Roger Waters is not a communist per se, but he is definitely communist friendly, and I would even go to say he is pretty much a socialist. Now, if you know me, you know I'm not a fan of communism at all, but that's okay. I'm still friends with John. We've already, we've all seen the video of me saying that John's still my friend, even though he's a communist, and that's, that's the truth. John's not actually a communist, this is a joke, in case you actually thought John was a communist. But he really is, though. This isn't a joke, but it is. But it's not, it's real. So, there is an interview out there from I don't even know when, and it might be pretty hard to look up, so I might not even be able to find it for this video, of Roger Waters talking to somebody, talking about World War II, and he basically says that the real heroes of World War II were the Russian people, that the Russians were the ones that committed the ultimate sacrifice in order to defeat the Nazis. He then goes on to not mock, but essentially mock Americans and the quote, brave Brits. He says brave Brits specifically because that's what they were kind of referred to during this time and afterwards because of their bravery. And he basically goes on and just dismisses all of that and uh, that the the West needed to recognize uh, the, the Russian people or the real heroes of the Second World War. The Russians 
beat the Nazis. The Russians won the Second World War for the rest of it. It wasn't the brave Brits or the, um, you know, or the cavalry coming over from the North Atlantic. It was the Russian people who made the supreme sacrifice to hold back the Nazi hordes and to defeat them. Now, Roger Waters is not 100% wrong when he says this. The Russian people did sacrifice a whole lot to win the war and defeat the Nazis, but they're only half the coin. The other half is... The other half is America. The other half is England. The brave Brits. If it weren't for the, quote, brave Brits that he says so mockingly, then maybe we wouldn't have won. There's no war on two fronts for Hitler to be stuck in a quagmire if the brave Brits aren't brave. There's no Americans to come and save the day if the brave Brits just go, that's eh, okay. The British knew that if they continued war and didn't make a deal with Hitler, that at the end of it all, they wouldn't be the number one superpower in the world, and that most likely the United States of America would essentially be able to rise to the top, because at the time we were going through rough stuff with you know the Great Depression and all that, so we weren't we weren't as good as we are now. Both Germany and the British knew that that would be the outcome if they really wanted to duke it out. And the brave Brits said, "You know what? I don't care. We're not going to make a deal with you. Screw you. The Americans can be number one. We'll take the L." And they did that. Their bravery stalled the Germans long enough for the Americans to come in, and then in conjunction with the French resistance be able to push the Nazis back, and yes, the Russians also helped too. But here's the thing, you know, how, you know how Germany invaded Poland? You know who also invaded Poland that same month? Take a wild guess. So Roger Waters is carrying water, funny enough, for the communists. I wonder why. So yes, very stupid take triggers me plenty of full. Also last year when we were pulling out of Afghanistan in a very stupid way and very inefficient way, uh, the very anti-war, very get out of the Middle East, leave it alone Western world, Roger Waters had nothing to say. Had absolutely nothing to say about us pulling out of Afghanistan in the way we did, and I found that very interesting. 20 years on, what does it mean to you, 9-11 and the aftermath? Well, a huge missed opportunity, really. And like everybody else, I was completely gobsmacked and... and shocked and and but in my infinite naivety i invented a scenario in my head where the american people would take this as a wake-up call and the fact that they needed to look at themselves and try and figure out what this was about and why it had happened and blah 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 and um, I, re I really honestly, for, for a, a number of hours and even a number of days, believed that that might happen. And of course it didn't. They went charging off down this retribution, a path of retribution, and invaded Afghanistan and, so, and started the global war on terror that has um, served to almost destroy the world, I would say. In fairness to the working classes of the United States, and they did a lot of vox pops interviewing people on the streets, they were going... But why would anyone hate the United States? How could anyone hate the United States? Well, it was explained to them almost immediately afterwards by bin Laden, among others, saying, well, it, it's your um, kind of a, a slavish support of the state of Israel and its treatment of the Palestinian people was one extremely important thing. Uh, but the other thing was the slavish support of the state of Saudi Arabia, which was done in exchange for um, rights to use all the oil that was under the desert there. And, and it, was, it was an arrangement made, as I understand it, by um, um, FDR. Now, despite all this, I can still put on the wall, and I can still enjoy it. I can still listen to Amuse to Death. Because they're still good albums, still good music, I still like them. I don't, I'm not going to stop liking them because I don't really like him. And I understand why he believes the things that he believes because, you know, he grew up in a way that he did. <laughs> so, you can like Sugiyama's music even though you disagree or really, really dislike his views that he has or had because he's no longer with us. I think it's really important to, again, understand that this man was born in 1931. 
you can't you can't hold him to modern progressive standards on gay people. It's pretty ridiculous that people would hold other people who are in their freaking 90s to this standard. It kind of reminds me of religious people arguing with atheists and always bringing up, but the Bible says X, so therefore it's true, when the atheists don't believe in God. I kind of view it like that. There's this kind of this, this, this lack of understanding of the other's point of view. So basically, my message is try to understand other people's perspectives, try to be respectful, and if you're not respectful of other people's beliefs, then why should you expect them to be respectful of yours? Again, there's obviously limits on that. Like Again, I mentioned before, if Sugiyama was like, hey, Japanese to stick to their own, I would not be very happy with that. There is limits, but let's try to be honest when we discuss these things. Again, they didn't give any direct quotes in these articles, and based on what the articles say, it doesn't sound like he said anything completely terrible just slightly antiquated which is to be expected from a very old japanese man all right that's pretty much all i wanted to say this video is probably gonna be really long let's see if i piss anybody off all right peace out